Shy frogs are something most poisoned or frog keepers have experienced at some point. Perhaps your frogs are sitting in the back corner of the vivarium all the time, or maybe they immediately jump away whenever you get close to the vivarium. But don't worry, you don't have to quit dart frogs and start keeping ball pythons just yet, or ever. Because there are strategies you can implement to make your dart frogs bolder, and today I'll try my best to share them with you. There's not really any scientific research behind any of the tips and tricks I'm about to share, but in my experience, they definitely make a big difference, and I can almost guarantee you that it will have a positive effect if you follow these steps. A lot of the methods I'll talk about today will be applicable for various small lizards and frogs too, but dart frogs will be the main focus. Before we continue with the video, please consider subscribing. It's completely free and it's a great way for you to support the channel. Now, without further ado, let's get into today's video. If your frogs are shy, my first recommendation is to consider how comfortable they can feel in the vivarium. This depends on a few factors. The amount of hiding places, how open or secluded the vivarium is, and the light intensity. I usually say that the more hiding places you give, the more you will see your animals in the long run. Sure, they will be hiding more in the first week or so, but over time, they will gradually start to come out more since they know that they always have a secluded spot to jump away to. Small hiding places, like coconut huts and film canisters, are useful of course, but I think it's even more important to have a lot of coverage, such as foliage and large hardscape pieces, to really break lines of sight and create rooms in the vivarium. This vivarium of mine is a good example of this. Since this picture was taken, it's been partially replanted and it houses a different species now, but I will use all the footage to make my point clearer. Look at how dark the bottom part of it is. Probably half of the ground space is fairly well lit up, but the other half is actually very dark and secluded, because of all the branches and plants blocking the light. It's not always necessary, but if you can make a large part of the bottom completely dark like this, then you've definitely done a good job providing them with a lot of coverage and usable space. This makes the frogs feel less exposed, and it's a layer of security for the frogs knowing that secluded dark spots are only one jump away, which in turn makes them comfortable enough to sit out in the open a lot. At the time these photos were taken, this vivarium housed my Phylobetes vitatus breeding group, a notoriously shy species, but when they got older, I saw them all the time, and I think this was one of the two main reasons for that. Of course, I'll get into the other reason later in the video. Finally, lower light levels will usually result in bolder frogs. Of course, if you have as much coverage as I just described with a lot of shady spots, then you will naturally have lower light levels in a large part of the vivarium, but if you have a smaller or more open setup, make sure you're not beaming them with a lot of light, because if you do, that might be the reason they're hiding a lot, and switching to a weaker light might make them come out more. Next, you should consider the location and surroundings of the vivarium, and what I'm about to say is probably the opposite of what you expect. The more traffic the location of the vivarium is, the bolder the frogs will be, because they will eventually learn that you're not dangerous. A lot of star frogs are typically shy, but you might have noticed that when you see the same species at a zoo, they usually won't even flinch when you come near the vivarium, and that's pretty natural because hundreds of other visitors do the same thing every day, so they've learned that there's nothing to worry about. Of course, you don't have to bring hundreds of people into your home to make your frogs bolder. Simply being around the vivarium more will have the same effect. And it gets far more effective if you combine it with your feeding routine, which I will talk about in a second. The frogs that I keep in the back corner of my frog room are usually fairly shy, and even though I still get to watch them from a distance from my chair every day, they still almost always hide if I walk up to the vivarium quickly or show my frog room to visitors. However, the frogs that I keep right outside of my frog room, in an area that everyone in the family walks past a lot, are almost always really bold. I don't constantly see them all, because they obviously have secluded spots to sit in, but they never jump away because I get close to them, and that's the main goal I want to accomplish rather than constantly seeing them. Recently, I moved my Ranitumea reticulata vivarium from the corner of my frog room to this more trafficked spot right outside of it, and they used to be very skittish before that, but there was a noticeable difference within a few weeks. They had lived in that same vivarium for almost a year, but just moving the whole thing out there seemed to make the difference, and now I always see a few of them, and they never jump away and hide due to human activity. 
You might be able to argue that it's somewhat unethical to purposefully keep your frogs in a traffic location, since there will be more stress factors around them, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it in the long run, both for you and your frogs, since they will quickly learn that you're not a threat, instead of being frightened whenever you go near them. A fantastic way to build a frog's trust is to bribe it with food. So here's my recipe for success. Keep the frogs just a little bit on the hungry side occasionally. Of course you shouldn't starve them or anything, but you don't have to feed them daily, and there's no need to feed them an excess amount of flies every single time. Then, when you do feed them, make sure you stay around the vivarium for just a little while watching them. Maybe place a chair next to the vivarium and sit there and watch them for a good 10-15 minutes. In my experience, doing this regularly for a little while works really well with any of the shy species that still have a large appetite. They will quickly stop caring that you're there, and eventually they will learn that there's nothing to worry about. Perhaps they will even start associating you with food. It didn't take many weeks of doing this to my Phylobitis vitatus to make an extreme difference. They went from being very skittish to always coming straight out to the front every time I opened a vivarium before I had even poured any flies in. I want to mention that you shouldn't try to keep your froglets or juveniles hungry like this, since they need plenty of food so they can develop properly, but watching them for a while at feeding time still works quite well. The number of frogs in a vivarium can certainly have an effect on how bold they are. Many dart frogs, such as Epipidobetes and Phylobetes, are more active and outgoing when they're kept in groups than when they're kept in pairs or by themselves. Of course, there's nothing wrong with keeping a pair or a single frog by itself, but groups are sometimes bolder and more active in my experience. You will also get the benefit that even if they hide sometimes, you will usually still be able to spawn a couple of them. As a disclaimer, there are also many species that don't do well in groups at all, such as Dendrobates tinctorius, so do your research. Speaking of group dynamics, something else that can make frogs bolder is breeding behavior. Some dart frogs are often shy as froglets, but they become bolder once they get older and start breeding. So sometimes time is all they need. By far the easiest solution if you really don't want to bother with the risk of getting shy frogs is to stick to the bolder species. There's almost a guarantee that you will get really brave and outgoing frogs if you choose some kind of Dendrobates tinctorius or Phylobetes terribilis, and you will most likely see them out and about almost all the time regardless if you follow these tips or not. However, you would be missing out on many interesting species. Of course, having a well-planted vivarium is great for the frogs, and there's nothing bad with keeping them in a room with a lot of movement in it, but at the end of the day, you shouldn't stress too much about it, especially if your frogs are new. It usually takes a few days, weeks, or maybe even months for the new frogs to settle into their new environment, but eventually they will. Sometimes time is all they need, and as I've already mentioned, froglets often get bolder with age. I can actually prefer a somewhat shy frog that you have to look closely in the vivarium to spot and might not always see, because that makes it a lot more rewarding the times when you do see them. The strategies I've mentioned in this video are very useful and work well in my experience, but if your frogs are new, I would just let them be for a while so they can settle in. Those were all the tips I had for dealing with shy frogs. If you have any questions or suggestions for videos you would like to see from me, please let me know in the comment section down below. I spend a lot of time making these videos, so it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe to the channel and share it with a couple of friends. It's the best way for you to support the channel and it's completely free. Make sure to also press the notification bell so you won't miss out on any future uploads. If you want to see more of my animal room, check out my Instagram at gecko underscore geek06. Thank you for watching.